Foot Clan, it is a big time waivers day. The fantasy football playoffs are quickly approaching and you've got to get yourself some of these names. We're going to debate the best wide receivers, the best running backs, some quarterback streaming options, tons of news to talk about, some injuries, uh, some interesting situations. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Tuesday, November 22nd, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Waiver Day. Oh, baby. Quarterback streamers, NFL News. We can skip the Monday night recap. <laughs> it's a pretty good week for waivers, I think. You know, some weeks we put together the waiver doc, sure. and it's like, oh man, I don't want to. I'm not putting any transaction in this week. I feel like there's a, a a lot of relevance. Yeah, and part of that has to do with news that broke uh, yesterday. Mr. Melvin Gordon, goodbye. Uh, well, we all know that Russ's issue was Melvin. <laughs> this will fix it. It. He, was, that was he does a... fumble on the goal line as though he's in, addicted to it. Yeah, I, I, I feel like the coaches the the this last fumble they were like you. They put all of the blame of the season. They said you're out because uh, they have no running backs now. It's just, it's Latavius Murray. Is it Divine Zigbo? Is that no who's... the ghost of Marlon Mack? And then Trace uh, Edmonds is hurt, right? Yes, that's what I'm saying. He he just went down with a high ankle sprain. Uh, I believe Mike Boone will be back here or eligible to be back in a week or so. Like so, it. but it's just it's it's so hilarious at this point of the season. They're like, Nah, man, that's enough. The guy that was stealing all of Javante Williams' snaps just a year ago. Nah, man, get off the field. Uh, what was the carry count for Christian McCaffrey last night? I believe he had seven carries. So the leader in total carries Elijah Mitchell with nine, McCaffrey with seven. McCaffrey had seven for 67 through the air. Unguardable. Yeah. Uh, big game for Debo. He's a big boy. He he looked extra large. <laughs> I He's just... Uh, Not in a bad way, but just like, wow. Debo he, looks... His speed is incredible. And um, he did the kind of play that got him into the end zone a ton last year, which is just... Uh, he shouldn't. Oh, he scored. Yeah, it's, it's like right. uh, he was great. Ayuk was great again. Yeah, Ayuk had two catches <laughs> and twenty yards. Well, and Jimmy, he was great because he had two touchdowns, two of the four. Yeah, Jimmy threw for four, two others to uh, Mister Kittle. Yeah, play your tight ends against Arizona. I was trying to find these drops yeah. for yeah. for Mister Kittle and for. We have a Kittle drop. Well, Kittle and Debo, they kind of. Oh, oh, the man drop. But uh, I'm struggling. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know what makes you look it's been like a while. A man. What? Playing against boys. <laughs> sure. I mean, <laughs> you you look at Kittle going down the sideline uh, for that second touchdown, and I mean, that I don't think they even attempted to tackle him. They were like, he looks big. They're on his second touchdown for sure. It, that is a very funny clip of a. Cardinals defender going, I'll get you, I'll get you. Nah. Next nah. time. Yeah, next time. Oh, you win this time, George Kittle. Well, the Cardinals stunk. Uh, <laughs> James Conner did score. You had the Dorch come in. I mean, the the, George. Nine for 103. He's a good player. Now, what happened was the dream that you never think can happen. The, if, if the you're nightmare. A, yeah, mostly a nightmare. But if you – like, we've all been there where – you are playing an opponent in fantasy. They have a lead of 0.5 or something. And then you're like, boy, the only way I can win this game is if their player who they're playing tonight, you know, fumbles 
or loses yards and then is injured. And on the very first play of the game, Rondale Moore took a carry for negative six yards, pulled his groin, ah. never came back out again. Yeah, groinindex.com, hopefully up to date. And people lost because of it. I mean, they, they either needed one. We're nodding. Groin index took care of it. Yep. You know, he's there. Uh, I mean, nine for 103. That was the potential for Rondell Moore in this game. He was part of the game plan. Ten targets for the Dorch. And instead, Rondell Moore is out again with injury. Cardinals are they, they just cannot get all of their players together at the same time. I mean, uh, Hollywood's about to come back. Rondell's going to be out. Zach Ertz is out. DeAndre Hopkins is there. I mean, the Dorch is going to show up on waivers today. It's just... Yeah, the Dorch will probably be involved. You've got to keep in mind the Arizona Cardinals, they play this coming week, week 12, but then they have the late week 13 bye week. So if you're looking at getting Rondell Moore healthy, Hollywood Brown healthy, you hold them out this one week and you get a bunch of extra time. And Kyler could get held out again because yeah. of the bye week. So, And because well, why win at this point? <laughs> Why yeah, win? Uh, because they're what they're four and seven. The the 49ers are six and four. The 49ers are in first. Are they tied with Seattle? I believe they are tied record wise, but, but I mean, the like the 49ers record, yeah. have the tiebreaker. But I'm saying you're two games out theoretically. Well, but ten in my heart. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into some news. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA Insurance. I mean, one bit of news I didn't get into earlier was just the fact that there's going to be a lot of fantasy footballers for the next two days. And so, uh, mm. you know, we've got the show today. Yeah. The, the footcast is coming out early for jointhefoot.com supporters. We've got Spotify Live tonight. Yes. So that's the headline. Not tomorrow. The it's, party room is tonight. The party room has been moved to tonight, Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, just keep making your, <laughs> just keep making your sounds. And then tomorrow, <laughs> there was no no letters, no words, just I, sounds. It was clearly Megalodon. You ever heard a shark pronunciate the word well? They don't have lips. Okay, I have to tell you what I saw on Twitter. It was great. So we have the Megalobowl, right? Yes. It's going on right now? Yes. Um, we're heading into the playoffs for the Megalobowl. Somebody on Twitter said, yes. I've got an idea for you. You should take what you do with the Megalobowl and you should make like a, you should label the long episode you do on Wednesdays every year <laughs> after that. You should name it like the Megala show. Wow. Yep. Okay. I, I, I pulled my punch on that one. Oh, did you? Yeah. I, I had yeah. it written up and then I was like, nah, I don't, I don't need to do this to this person. But this then, where, but, but then, then you, you were like, uh, well, what if we put them on blast in front of hundreds of thousands of why? people? <laughs> There is that. Uh, <laughs> apologies. We, we appreciate your great advice. The Megalodon is the it's the origination. Yes. Yes. And then the Megalobowl came out of that. It's so important that you know that. Yeah. The Megalodon so has been our biggest episode every year for what? what Generations. Is this like year seven, eight of the Megalo Megalodon episode? We However long we've been yeah, doing yeah, this. All right. I, I'm, look, and I'm also I'm so hyped that like the Megalodon just in. You know, pop culture and society, it's, I mean, it's, it's coming back in a big is way. It? Yeah. it is not a coincidence that we started <laughs> hyping the Megalodon like seven, eight years ago, and now it's a Megalodon. every museum, all, you know, Jason Dis Statham, Discovery Channel, yeah, movies are being made. Oi. <laughs> is that not, your Jason Statham? He's not even Australian. That, no. <laughs> that was Roy Kent. Yeah, that was Roy Kent. <laughs> Oi. Oi. Uh, They're the same guy. <laughs> real news now. The Falcons placed Kyle Pitts on injured reserve. Yeah. That sprained MCL turned into a torn MCL, which is going to likely require surgery. It's unfortunate, but he's going to be gone. Yeah, it's a six-plus week recovery, so this season for fantasy is over, but it is not like an ACL where you're looking at a – a year timeline, you know, wh will he be ready for the season? This just ends 2022, and then uh, he should be ready to go for it, next next year. It's possible he never has to attempt to catch a pass from Marcus Mariota again. Right. Glass half full. Melvin Gordon, waived by the Broncos. Chase Edmonds will miss a few weeks. Right now, Latavius Murray is atop the list. He had a good fantasy day. Uh 
people like Latavius. That's what I'm learning. I mean, it, he shows up. People play him. That's you're, just what when, happens. When you're talking about people, you're talking about NFL teams, coaches, mm -hmm. the franchise themselves. They like what they see from him in practice and say, we trust you. We'll yeah. give you the ball. You do good enough. Yeah, and if you don't fumble on the goal line in Denver, then you've already out paced your competition I don't, I don't blame the Broncos for cutting Melvin Gordon if if they got to a point where you say I don't think we can hand the ball to this player any longer we just cannot trust him to not fumble the ball if you're not going to be able to do that then open up the roster spot and you know last week Latavius Murray this past week had 17 carries that's the most of any running back on this team for the season so obviously we'll we'll talk about him in a little bit more detail when we get into the waiver section where he uh, filters into the pecking order what on earth is going on with Justin Fields I have uh, no idea man. I have heard conflicting reports from major reporters Ian Rappaport Adam Schefter uh, first reported by Ian Rappaport, a potential dislocated shoulder. Schefter said it was not a dislocation. Uh, our injury expert, Matthew Betts, said an AC joint injury. I have heard day-to-day, -day, but not ruling out season ending. That is what <laughs> anywhere Eberflus said. Tell me when to stop. Tell me tell when to me, stop. Tell me when to stop. Hey, at least he's not throwing out career ender here. Day-to-day, -day or he'll never play again. Minute-to-minute, minute, all the way to career ender. Right. No, I, I think right now we just have to watch the news this week. Justin Fields, if he's out, it's simple for fantasy players. If he plays the game, you're starting him at quarterback. And if he's if he's not, I don't recommend starting him. Yeah, and I would say as of right now, my expectation is that he will be able to play. It's his non-throwing shoulder. This is an injury that should be able to be uh, you should be masked. Able to, well, yeah, you you can <laughs> might not be able to run as much. You can get the shot in the shoulder and um, be able to play through it. But uh, you don't you think he could be limited on the ground? I do think he could be limited on the ground. Um, we we haven't seen anything on the hamstrings that right, were bothering that him. Should be remembered. That's my that was like the bigger been, concern for me. He's not been a good quarterback when he's not running the football. No, so that is that is a bit of a concern. Joe Mixon, Matthew Stafford. Officially in the concussion protocol, Sean McVay said uh, Daryl Henderson felt a little something in his knee. Um, so that's why he had two carries and four snaps. Cam Akers said 14 carries. Kyron Williams will continue to get worked in. He was the pass catcher. Robert Sala came out after he heard our podcast yesterday. Yes. we Look, I am, I am proud of this podcast for being the only – Trendsetters. The only media yeah. source mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that – took the opportunity to to knock Zach Wilson down. If no one else will say it. Yeah. We're finally we'll going to say it. Yeah. We'll st we'll stick up for you Jets fans. Not committing to Zach Wilson as this week's starter versus the Bears. Yeah. It's because you can't. It's, you can't commit to a guy who will not take responsibility for being any part of the solution when he is every part of the problem. Yeah, it, it's really good to see the head coach come out and say this. You can have arguments for the confidence and building up your player, and I think there is a time and a place for that. And that place is gone. That, that This is a winning team with a good record who could should make the playoffs with their remaining schedule, and what their focus needs to be is winning games. Who is the best quarterback to put out there? It's not about uh, puffing up any – anybody on the roster it's a matter of winning football games and and that's the yeah. turn you'd you'd like to see them make i agree let zach wilson complete puberty then give him another shot yeah um 2.6 inches per play i believe is what i heard <laughs> in the second half of the new england game never heard it broken down like that oh my goodness but uh that was today's news and notes presented by usaa insurance learn more at usaa.com slash insurance let's talk waivers Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. Well, like Jason said, grab as many screens as you can and uh, fill them up with these waivers. But trade deadlines have gone by for a lot of yeah for a lot there, of leagues. Could be some Not, out there. yeah for for a majority. So waivers takes even you know a higher um, importance right now heading into the playoffs. If you can't fix your problems via trade, yeah, and. Because of where we're at in the season, you're a couple weeks away from the playoffs. It is now or never for a lot of teams. 
do not hesitate to spend larger than you normally do. You don't get any bonus points in the playoffs or after the season for having remaining fab, unless you do in your league, in which case adjust accordingly. But, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you in the league with the most fab. What matters is if you in the league with the best players. Can I still spend up if I only have like $4? $4? Sure. Yeah, you could spend up $4 okay. worth. I can't spend more than that. No, and, and so my piece of advice uh, over the years is usually, like I'm coming in in, our, in most of our leagues where I've still got a healthy amount left. And I'm going to spend very aggressively, but I'm going to try to save five five dollars for playoff defense of picking up players over others. I love when I go into the playoffs and I've got three or four or five dollars of fab, and my opponent has zero because whatever he needs belongs to me. Yeah, yeah, it's a real a hole move. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, he's just, he's just boxing out. We got no bye weeks this week. No, no. This no, is we got to save those for week fourteen. But the the, the, megalo, the megalodon's gonna be even longer. Yeah. Well, this yeah. is this is uh, the Thanksgiving day. They they need a a full slate on Sunday, and they want to put a bunch of games on Thursday, so they can't have buys. All right, no buys. Let's get into the wide receivers that we will welcome into the fold this week. In the probably rostered, but just glance in case they're not category it's the christian watson joshua palmer um both of those players i'd be shocked if any competitive league had them available but they need to be on your roster watson with five touchdowns in two weeks joshua palmer the big game and mike williams likely to miss a little bit of time let's not talk extensively there nope paris campbell darius slayton donovan peoples jones i think those are three really interesting names and if you want to put Demarcus Robinson in there because of how available he is. I would not blame you. It's not like Rashad Bateman is back next week, but Paris Campbell has been a very consistent target in this offense for quite some time now. He didn't get into the end zone, but you know, it's five for 67 yet again. Yeah. I mean, this is, I think this is what you should be able to expect going forward. Uh, we talked about his previous three games with Matt Ryan. He was a top 12 wide receiver in all three of those matchups, but he had a touchdown in all three of those. In this last game, no touchdown, still pretty good. Uh, he didn't set the world on fire. Half PPR scoring was sub 10 points, but it was 9.2. And I think he is involved enough. Obviously, he's he's running uh, plenty of routes, and he's got the, the size-speed combo to to score and so I, I I like having Paris Campbell I'm pretty comfortable with him and for me to get to that place because I was never a believer that's true you that's, know, that's you should you. believe the the next two matchups against Pittsburgh and Dallas Paris Campbell is going to have 12 receptions per game for about 40 yards uh with with the pass rush that they are going to put on to to the Colts it's going to be very tough, but if anyone can benefit from a PPR situation in those matchups, it will be Paris Campbell. And the interesting thing is that, um, you know, Darius Slayton, I think in many respects, is a better pickup, but a completely different skill set than sure. Paris Campbell. What if I told you Darius Slayton has been a top 24 wide receiver in four of the last six weeks? I would believe it, man. Darius Slayton and Daniel Jones have had so many good games no matter how bad the, the team does not want to use Darius Slayton, they are forced to put him into action. And he's a guy that if, you know, there's different looks. There's there's picking up guys to stash for hopefully big, giant breakouts, and that's getting harder and harder as we get later into the season. And then there's players that's, I need, I need to start someone. Darius Slayton is probably near the top of the list. Um, if and I, Wandale's now out. I mean, there yeah. is another variable here that doesn't exist for Paris Campbell. Previous six weeks, Slayton's on pace for almost 1,200 yards and six touchdowns on 65 catches. That's the kind of guy he is, a, a vintage, you know, deep threat, 60, 70 catches. But you're talking about no Sterling Shepard anymore. You're talking about your primary targets outside of now Wandale being gone, being Richie James, like – who I guess is in contention too in the more PPR capacity, but Darius Slayton could be one of those names that wins people fantasy championships that no one saw coming. Yeah, sure. I, I completely agree. They've got this next month, they are playing their division, Dallas, Washington, Philadelphia. 
I don't love those matchups. You, you, you got Diggs guarding the number one wide receiver. Washington's defense has just gotten better and better. They're getting Chase Young back. Um, and then Slay for Philadelphia. So uh, he he's going to be like involved. like Campbell more as a pickup this week? I would week? like Campbell more as a pickup. I would also like uh, Traylon Burks more as a pickup because while I don't think tr I have as much confidence in necessarily starting uh, Traylon Burks, like who scores more fantasy points this week, Traylon Burks or Darius Slayton? I, I probably lean the Darius Slayton side. But the upside for something special going forward really isn't there with Darius Slayton. I don't, I don't know. I lean Slayton for sure over Traylon Burks. So Traylon Burks uh, only played 50% of snaps but had 35% targets per route run. That is his third game this season over 35% targets per route run. That's one of those indicative stats of future success if he gets on the field anymore. He's just going to continue to be good. I know last week he had the um, – the two the, minute the icing, the icing on the yeah. cake, long play that pushed him over the hundred yard mark, but he was still very good before that. And there was a lot of manufactured touches. They're trying to get him involved. Um, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying like that. That's exactly, you kind of pointed out why I hesitate with him is because you said it's the third time he's done that, but it was his first relevant fantasy week. So it, could he ascend? Absolutely. I just think, um, I'm nervous about a team that's entire goal is to run the football and not pass it. That's my only hesitation there. Yeah, it's it's just a matter of is Traylon Burks an alpha? And we haven't really seen that this year, but he started the year not playing that much. Then he got injured, just worked his way back. This was his second game back from injury. And, you know, last year, obviously, I'm not saying Traylon Burks is A.J. Brown, but this offense can support an alpha wide receiver. A.J. Brown was great in this offense, and they still wanted to give the ball to Derrick Henry. Uh, Demarcus Robinson had nine targets, went nine for 128 as the de facto number one in Baltimore. He is 9% rostered. Uh, okay, spot starter. Yeah, I mean, he's he's interesting because of all these players we're talking about, he's the one that is most readily available besides, like, the Dorch. Uh which the Dorch is, you don't you don't know for sure. Will like will Rondale Moore miss this week? If he does, sure, I'll play the Dorch against the Chargers. <laughs> I mean, he'll he'll see all of that slot work that Rondale Moore was seeing, and I will continue to shout out uh, shout out my dude Donovan Peoples Jones of the Cleveland Browns. He's having, it's not it, it, this is not the the breakout of like holy freaking crap. Look what it, what Peoples Jones is doing. But it's just, it is solid game after solid game. And if you are out there and you believe in uh, Voldemort returning for the Cleveland Browns, that he will be the solution for their quarterback that they've been looking for. Because, I mean, they paid they paid him a guaranteed, what, $230 million or whatever it is. And, like, Peoples-Jones the last couple weeks, 16 a touchdown against Buffalo. He finally got his touchdown, but it was 99 yards, 81, 71, 74. Like, the guy is just... Very, very solid for your wide receiver three position, and he's still available in like forty percent of leagues. Yeah, it's. It, I'm glad you brought up Voldemort's name um, because it's, it, you're not supposed to, right? But we'll say it. Tom Riddle uh, is on waivers, <laughs> and uh, if you, this is the time. He's going to be back next week against Houston at the quarterback position. He's obviously not going to be in our streaming candidates today, so if you're looking for a future quarterback help, maybe Tom Riddle can help you. Uh, you've got some other names, maybe in the stash category, Jameson Williams. He yeah, he should be he can stashed practice now, now. Yes. Odell Beckham talking to teams. Uh, you really got a hit on the location that he goes to, to have any fantasy relevance this don't season. Don't be the Cowboys. Please don't be the Cowboys. <laughs> Just for selfish, purely selfish <laughs> reasons. Please don't be the Cowboys. You're worried that if he shows up, that your recent acquisition of Dalton Schultz will be in vain. Yes, that is he true. Is, I, I mean, might want to see that. He is <laughs> Odo Beckham is a fantasy time bomb for some team. Yeah, I mean, could because he's gonna go to a winning team. He's gonna go where he's gonna play too. He's gonna go where there where he will take snaps and targets away from someone else who currently is on a good team, which means there is a chance that they are uh, right now a playable fantasy asset. Yeah, so Gabe Davis, watch out. Michael Gallup, watch out. Sure. I yeah. mean, this is uh, 
Darius Slayton, watch I, out. I, honestly, I am just so rooting for the Giants to beat the Cowboys this week. I don't know how that's possible. Whoever wins that game gets Odell. That's what it seems like. <laughs> Odell's going to be like, look, I want to go in the playoffs. I want to play for the winner. Whoever oh wins gosh. this game. That's what it feels like. Um, the, the last names for me that I want to bring up at wide receiver are the duo of options for the Kansas City Chiefs. Sure. You want Patrick Mahomes' targets. We don't know. It's too early, and you're not going to know um, whether Juju's going to be back. But if Juju is gone, he's currently still in the pro uh, the concussion protocol, you've got Justin Watson and Sky Moore out there. Justin Watson ran 90-plus percent of routes. He was uh, out there a lot. Sky Moore was not as involved in the behind-the-scenes metrics, but yet out-targeted. Uh, Justin Watson had a pretty good game and obviously was the guy that they drafted to really step up. So as a rookie, I lean more towards the Sky Moore side, uh, hopeful upside, more and more involvement. And he really did make some super important plays in that game against the Chargers. Uh, but either one of them, I think, are worth a pickup and a play if Juju is out. And don't forget the full context of it. Juju may or may not play, but even if, if Juju is active, you have McCall Hardman's on the IR. Kadarius Toney, the new uh, acquisition at the wide receiver position, tweaked ah! his hamstring yet again. That's not the hamstring. That's yeah, not the hamstring. The, yoo -hoo, yoo -hoo, yoo -hoo. We have a sound for it. I'm Sorry. wearing the shirt, Jason. <laughs> oh, you sure are. <laughs> 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 um, but, it's, I mean, one of these guys and will be on the field, and I guess I lean towards Justin Watson because he was the one who was on the field more, so if Juju is back, he probably takes those the Sky Moore targets, and Justin Watson will be on the field. I don't know, though. Are you willing to drop Kadarius Tony with the hamstring? Because his no. opportunity when he comes back might be more limited? I mean... In a redraft? Right now, I don't want to. If you, it's, it's crunch time, so I get it. If you have to make the move, perhaps Matthew Betts, our injury guy, he believes Tony could miss multiple weeks. That is... I mean that that's, that's a, a death sentence for the state. I mean that's season. also that's the pretty easy bet. The guy who's had hamstring problems the entire season Does, tweaked his hamstring again. Yeah, in redraft I'm I'm probably moving on. Uh, Deontay if, Johnson? Yeah, I think I'm moving on there too. He his his targets just aren't valuable enough. DJ Moore? Yeah. Oh, I mean man. I this is the time you got to win now. Goodness Drake gracious. London? Drake Drake London no because Kyle Pitts yeah. being out I'm curious to see if there's a consolidation of Targets he to might London. be seventy five percent of the targets. <laughs> right. It will be six, yeah, but it will be seventy five percent. Yeah, yeah, six of eight targets <laughs> on that team. <laughs> That's right. All right, quick break. Back with running backs. All right, let's dive into what running backs are welcoming into the fold this week. There are some options. There, there are, are some some players out there. Um, there are five names that are rostered in 60% or above numbers. Uh, Rashad White, Isaiah Pacheco, Damian Harris, Elijah Mitchell, and Kenyon Drake. Those are all massively rostered, so probably not available. But if they are, you know, all of our waiver rankings in order are available on the website, by the way, thefantasyfootballers.com, so you can see where we have them ranked. And we we pull our roster percentages from Sleeper. That's right. So there, there's if, variability. If you play on a different platform, there's a, a different roster percentage. I do think it's important to focus on the lower rostered running back options. In particular, Samaj P. Ryan, yep. who had three receiving touchdowns, uh, just 30 yards on the ground, but seems likely to get an opportunity against Tennessee with Joe Mixon potentially missing the week due to concussion protocol. Latavius Murray, just 25% roster, taking on Carolina. Jarek McKinnon at 39% uh, roster percentage with the Clyde injury taking him off the field for multiple weeks. And then James Cook, who did get in for 11 carries, 86 yards. That was very strange. Um, Detroit is on, it's on the docket, and um, that's generally pretty good for even committees. Out of those four guys, who do you want to talk about? Well, I mean, Latavius Murray is the clear to me yeah. is the clear number one waiver wire of pickup. the of the low roster of guys. the low roster guys and potentially even over the high roster guys um I think there's a debate to be had between Rashad White who looks awesome but is still dealing with uh, you know Leonard Fournette isn't just gone unless the hip injury coming out of the bye is is 
actually he is gone. Um, but Latavius Murray was pretty good this last week. They have switched the offense to a new Kubes, and we know yeah. that the Kubiaks, they they got a good run scheme. They know how to run the ball. They know how to call plays to run the ball. Raiders. He is all Raiders, alone. Raiders. Uh, it was the Raiders. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. But they're playing against Carolina, who has not been good against the run so far this year. Um, going forward, rest of season, you know, it's like, okay, uh, Samaj P. Ryan. Samaj P. Ryan, if Joe Mixon is Samaj out. Samaj Trois is what we call him. <laughs> oh, that's, that was even better than Samaj Three Ryan. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm taking all the credit. Oh, yeah. Definitely not You just Twitter. made it up right there <laughs> on the spot. Definitely not Twitter. Incredible work, Andy. Yeah. Um, Same person who had that Megala mm -hmm. uh, yeah. suggestion. But Samaj P. Ryan, another big-time pickup this week. If Joe Mixon is gone, he plays against Tennessee. Tennessee has been completely shutting down the running game. Thankfully, Samaj. That's not what P. Ryan does best. <laughs> I was going to say, Samaj is going to do some work through the air, so it should be okay. But he feels like, like a little bit of a trap. Latavius Murray, I think, rest of season – is at worst an RB two, and I think he'll have RB one weeks when he falls into the end zone. So I'm I'm actually really interested in Latavius Murray. I would probably drop thirty five percent of my fab on him. Yeah, I think he's going to be start worthy for sure, he's, but in a Brian Robinson kind of way. Yeah, yeah, it's it's gross, but I I think he'll get more targets than Brian Robinson. That's fair. Like there's there's no one left on this roster. It's going to be just. It's going to be super nasty Latavius Murray. But you said Mike Boone's coming back, right? Yeah. but That would steal away those targets. It, it will. It, it absolutely will. Um, but, I mean, it's going to be, what, 20-plus opportunities a week, and you're just hoping that he falls in the end zone? I don't think so. No? No, I don't, because they're going to lose most games. They don't play the Raiders every week. And if Mike Boone takes passing down work and they're in deficits. I actually do think it'll be near 20 opportunities a game because while they might lose these games, they don't give up a lot of points. They're, they're not in double-digit deficits usually. Their defense is so stinking good. And if I have Russell Wilson and I've got that defense, I know what I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to establish it and run the ball. Jarek McKinnon, James Cook, where are we with those players? McKinnon is, I think, more reliable than Cook in the sense that with the new injury to Clyde Edwards-Alaire, it becomes a two-man committee for the Kansas City Chiefs. McKinnon is the passing downs guy. That's going to be really valuable as you go forward. So I would rather have McKinnon than Cook, who I love rookie running backs. I love getting these rookies in the second half of the year, and he's obviously on a great offense, but he still seems like a really distant two to me. Obviously got in more this last week. Uh, do you guys, would you rather have Cook than McKinnon? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I think I'd take McKinnon. Uh, Cam Akers could be good for a spot start with the Daryl Henderson injury taking on Kansas City. Mm -hmm. I think he's a good bet for at least 10 to 15 opportunities. He, he could but be. But it would be hard to watch. What's What's difficult is that like Kyron Williams was the one running the routes, and they're up against Kansas City with probably a backup, maybe even a third-string quarterback if Wolford is not ready to go. So that's that's desperation for either of those guys. All right, let's dive into what tight ends we're welcoming into the fold this week. Heavily rostered, but take a gander. You know, uh, David Njoku, three targets just coming back from injury. It'll probably be better for him soon. Dawson Knox, seven for 70. I think there will be a mad dash for Dawson, Dawson Knox uh, by your league mates that sort by most recent points scored. It's a trap. And usually it's a trap, but Detroit... Is, no, it's not a is, I don't think it's a It's trap. an opportunity. I think it is an opportunity. <laughs> Dawson Knox, um, I, I, I believe he's a really, really good start this week. He's, Six targets the week before as well. Yeah, he he's certainly on my radar of players that I would be trying to pick up for a weekly s spot start at tight end uh, if this was my roster. Touchdown or 57 or more yards in four of the last five games for okay. Dawson Knox. That's not terrible. Uh, Greg D, the Dolchich. <laughs> the Dolchich? <laughs> I almost went Dorch. Dolch, I messed it up. Yeah. He's not the Dorch. He's the Dolch itch. He's the Dolch itch. <laughs> He's the itch. Four for 30 last week. Um, It's not a good time with Russ. It's not. No. Because what happens is you see a play. 
I remember last week, Jason, you told me you saw some catch by Cortland Sutton. Mm -hmm. You're like, he should have a great game. Yep, it was early in the game. He actually had two early in the game. It was like, okay, here we He's go, gonna, Cortland it's, Sutton week. It's, it's the same story for all these guys. You you can't string together multiple drives. You just said they want to establish it. Um, Greg D will have his chances. He's young and athletic. Trey McBride, Mike, four yes. catches last night. It turned into tough a, defensive an matchup. incredible uh, 14 yards, but – was I was very encouraged to see it jump up to four targets. The injury to Rondale Moore. We like the Dorch to come in in replacement if he needs to, but Trey McBride uh, also replacing those middle of the field targets. So I think that there is a chance he. If you're in a deeper league, I I don't mind putting him on the back of the bench and seeing what happens. Yeah, yeah I, Max Williams did come back, catch um, at least one pass himself. Yeah, I, I didn't see enough from McBride to roster for me. And then you've got the bye week after this week. So if I'm not starting him this week and I'm just holding on to him, then that means I'm waiting for three more weeks. The, the receivers are going to get healthy. Um, if you want another good spot start, Foster Moreau, the, there's three teams that we're targeting defensively against tight ends. It's been Seattle and Arizona, and now Detroit has been firmly added to that mix. Those three teams. And Foster Moreau plays against the Seattle Seahawks this week. In uh, the absence of Darren Waller, uh, tight end for the Raiders. Let me ask this question before we move on. If you're dropping Kyle Pitts after the injury, what's the best long-term potential start here? We didn't mention Juwan Johnson, but Juwan Johnson has been really, really good. He's a touchdown machine. The tight end, eight, four, and four the last uh, three weeks. They, they, the Saints have said they're going to keep getting Taysom Hill more, oh, it, more yeah. work. I don't know what Taysom's rostered percentage yeah. is, but you just just take a peek. Someone could have rage dropped him, uh, rightfully so. But it was Mike. It, <laughs> but he logged into your account and rage dropped him. I look, I I I did it for you. You imagine but, if you could push a button and drop him from every roster on Sleeper? <laughs> oh, he'd push that button. Like if you had that, I would have pushed. If you had to so turn both ago. keys to drop. But with the news that the Saints are saying. We we are underutilizing him, which for the amount of money they are giving him, yes, they he needs to be on the football field more. But if he's really going to get more and more quarterback snaps, he's going to throw the ball. You need to play him at the tight end position, be, which is uh, it, it's unethical. Oh, yes, come on, it, oh, to, to have it's not unethical. If a player is taking the majority of his snaps from the quarterback position and you can play him as a fantasy tight end, it is unethical. No, no. If the tax code says you can write this thing <laughs> off, you can write it off. That's not unethical to follow the rules. It's the platform. Jason that, knows it. It's the platform that's responsible. It is Wait, not, you're telling no, me that it, you can't be an ethical person and play him? I'm, that's I, not the right word. I, I know what with, you're saying. I agree with both of you. Uh, it is unethical of the platforms to allow us to do this Correct. ethical thing. Correct. That's, how dare you platforms keep him at tight end? He isn't one. But it yes, would be unethical not to play him. It, it is a really <laughs> good name to bring up because if you didn't watch that game, he was behind center a, a lot. lot. They brought him in a ton. And if you could play him at tight end and he's on your waivers, he's the number one pickup. And the, the, the only other name I want to bring up, again, in, in response, you said you lost yeah, Kyle yeah. Pitts. You're looking for uh, long term. Long term. We glossed over him a little bit, but I, I picked him up in two different leagues. He's mostly rostered, but Njoku coming back from his injury, uh, having a bad game, I still believe in him rest of season. Sure. So he would be the guy that I would like to replace. All right, defenses that we are welcoming into the fold, very important. And uh, please, 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 number one on the list by a lot. Miami. Oh, really? And they're, okay, right. they're, they're, they're not number one Okay, to Good. me. Kansas City's number one. They play, oh, yeah, yeah, they play yeah. the That's Rams fair. Fair. Uh, and potentially Bryce Perkins. Um, so the Chief, And the Chiefs' defense is, is – they have playmakers, so I think that there's a chance that's a really – like the Rams are the number one team to play your defense against. And then Miami's right there because Houston – Houston is the safest team to play your defense against. Yeah, Houston's not going to do anything, but the Dolphins' defense has also been just so they're getting, bad. They're getting better. They are getting they're better. Getting better. I, I, I would they're, off the, they're off the bye week. Could have made some, Mr. some Chubb, changes. Mr. Chubb going after Davis Mills. Yeah, they made I, some trades. And the, the fact that they were on the bye week, they're, they're available in the vast majority of leagues. Yeah, I actually have a different number one defense on the oh week. Oh, my. And it's the Denver Broncos because I want a great defense 
in a great matchup. I would agree that the Kansas City Chiefs matchup is awesome, but I don't think their defense is phenomenal. Same with the Dolphins. Matchup is great. Their defense isn't phenomenal. The Broncos' defense is phenomenal. They're no, going to that, be playing fair. against the Carolina Panthers, and we don't even know who the quarterback is. It could be Sam Darnold, another quarterback that in a two-quarterback uh, leagues you might want to look at picking up because I I would expect him to be the, the, the starter this week. Uh, P.J. Walker's injured. Uh, Baker's career is over and um, timeline wise from you know he was activated last week for his 21 day window so if it's not this week yeah. it has to be next week or else they put him back on the shelf for the rest of the season Broncos the highest rostered for sure but still available in the majority of leagues though um yeah no I don't know about that well roster percentage is 41 percent that I'm seeing that's, so. that's the information we have so that would be the majority of leagues. That so I mean, I get it. Not in your league. They're not available. No, you're talking no, to me? I'm talking to the listener. Oh, no. Because they're all shouting, I, just know I can't get the Broncos. Yeah, they are for sure shouting that. Yeah, they, it's tough because I, I was only saying that because we don't know if uh, there's a lot of leagues without defenses, and I don't know if roster percentages count oh, in those. Okay, that's interesting. So um, Broncos are, I think, the best pickup because they're a great defense against Carolina, so I t do agree with that. Who's if you're looking at a spot start, it, it would be you know Kansas City, Chicago against the Jets, Minnesota against New England, Miami against Houston, and Pittsburgh. They take on Indianapolis, and I actually think that flips both directions. Indianapolis against Pittsburgh as well. The Colts, they are very stable as a defense. You know They have not run into negative this year. They're kind of a four- to eight-point defense every single week. And, um, you know, Pittsburgh is not a threat to – you know, go into Indianapolis, I think, and put up more than 20 points. Oh, there will be turnovers. There will be turnovers. There will be turnovers for sure. Andy, I think you are right. Who would you say is the number one most rostered defense? The Denver Broncos. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll go with the Cowboys or the Eagles. The Cowboys or the Eagles were the first two I searched up and looking at their roster oh, percentage. Oh, at their roster percentage, yeah. They are at 72 and 78%. Actually, okay. the number one roster defense is the Buffalo Bills at 82%. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. So that does seem maybe, like there's maybe, like 20. Maybe. You need to add 20% on to these numbers. You might need to, yeah. Is what I'm looking at. But it's still, I, I do think that the Broncos could be out there. Put them the at the top of the They're list. the number one. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, all right, well. That's a lot of names. Yes. That's a lot, a lot of uh, players that you need to pay attention to and put in waiver pickups and make the extra effort this week. I mean, and um, we are making it very, very easy for you. Go to the fantasyfootballers.com, go to the rankings tab on, and then there's waiver wire rankings. That page has everything we just talked about today. If you're and more and more, if you're a supporter, <laughs> it will show you our individual rankings. It will show you. What the fab percentage we recommend dropping on them is it will show you their next three matchups coming up, whether they are good, bad. It's all at a glance. It is very easy. If you got a bunch of screens handy, you yeah, got to open the fold and then put, put the platform on the right and put your waivers on the left. And if, you, if, right. you're, if you're like <laughs> me <laughs> and you've got a bunch of leagues, you just put one league on the right, you put this little tool on the left, and boom, bam, you welcome them into the fold. All right, that was Welcome into the Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. Galaxy Z Fold 4 makes multitasking easy. Use it to check player rankings, watch highlights, view trade targets, improve your roster all at the same time. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. Streaming quarterback options if you are in, in that spot, which uh, I hope happens. you're not. I mean, I hope that you're not. Like, if you got, if you have Justin Fields, oh, you need to be prepared, be proactive. Geno Smith is my answer this week against the. But why? Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> there, that, that's there the end go. of my sentence. I don't, there we go. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to spend time in week twelve explaining to you why that's a good matchup. End anymore. of analysis. Yeah, it's it's very good. I'm going to go with Taylor Heineke against Atlanta. End uh, of analysis. Yeah, against Atlanta. <laughs> um, he was over 20 fancy points his first three starts, and then the last two weeks had uh, bad matchups for completely different reasons. Houston is a bad matchup because you just don't need to throw the ball. Last time he played against Atlanta, last year, 290 and three touchdowns, finished as the quarterback five. I, I think Taylor Heineke has looked good, and the matchup is perfect. And I've got the handsome one, Jimmy Garoppolo against the New Orleans Saints. Coming off of a big game, had the four touchdowns, not that you're expecting 
four touchdowns a week from Jimmy Garoppolo. But aside from that, he's been a very safe streaming option, which which he has the upside because he's surrounded by absolute incredible talent that can carry him, uh, completing over 70% of his passes, the Saints allowing the eighth most points per game. So the matchup is there, and uh, I think I'd go uh, – the Geno and, and Heineke to me have higher upside, but if you just need – a good floor, Jimmy Garoppolo is there. I think that, you know, when when you play Jimmy G, you are hoping for the yards after the catch players to yeah. do their thing. And I think there's going to be more games like this for Jimmy G this year. There's going to be two or three more games where he drops the ball into Christian McCaffrey or Debo or George Kittle's hands, and they just do the rest. The talent well, is ridiculous It is the 49ers. And they are very, I mean, knock on wood, 49er fans, they're very healthy right now. Their line Incredible. Debo, Their line is awesome. Debo did look a little bit banged up at the end of that game. I haven't heard anything uh, new on right. that, but you know he was going to the sideline, laying down, uh, looking looking hurt. That's just what happens when you're that big and you can run that fast. You can't not get hurt. That is fair. Hopefully, stay stay healthy. Yeah, stay, stay healthy. healthy. Um, all right. Well, that's gonna do it tomorrow. The Megalodon Show. Do not <laughs> miss it. Just in case you're brand new. The Megalodon, it's the Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday show all jammed into one on Wednesday ahead of Thanksgiving Day and the weekend. Um, and make sure you listen to it in its entirety because at some point there will be a hashtag that comes out of some shenanigans from the show. We will ask you to tweet that and try. We will try to get that trending. We got up to number two. Right behind Thanksgiving. Yeah, and this, this, this year, Turkey Day is going down. Okay. To our hashtag, but also we give we do some like prizes and stuff. Yeah, anybody that tweets with that hashtag is going to win some autographed sports gear. Brooksy. Well, they're entered to win. Yeah, yeah. not out everybody. <laughs> what did I say? You, you said, said anybody that tweets that's going to win some oh, gear. Oh, <laughs> well, that was a bit of a snafu. And we're broke. <laughs> <laughs> entered to win. I got ahead of myself. I was just thinking about Brooks. He picked out some pretty sweet gear this yes. year. Yes. So, um, very yeah. excited. And Spotify Live yes. is tonight. It's usually Wednesday, but the party room cannot be stopped. So we put it on today. Yeah. That's uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, right? Yes, 6 Eastern. All right. Take care, Foot Clan. Good luck on the waivers. See you tonight. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.